Hi guys, welcome to this free anaesthetic tutorial on pulse oximetry. Today we will cover an introduction, a history of the pulse oximeter, the components used, the mechanism of action, some advantages, some disadvantages. Introduction. Pulse oximetry is the measurement of transmitted light through a translucent site to non-invasively measure arterial blood oxygen saturation at the arteriola level. It was the British aviation researcher Millicum in 1940 who first used two wavelengths of light to produce a lightweight co-oximeter for monitoring pilots. This simple system has been refined to produce the oximeter we find in practice today. Components. A probe can be placed on the ear, finger, toe or nose and two light emitting diodes produce red light at 660 nanometers and infrared light at 940 nanometers. These two light wavelengths shine intermittently, operating around 30 times a second. A receiver, which is housed on the probe, then detects the light transmitted through the tissues. And the system contains a microprocessor, which processes and facilitates the data. Here we can see the typical graph that one will find. Now, on the x-axis, we've got wavelength in nanometers. On the y-axis, we have absorbance, which is relative. The red line represents oxygenated hemoglobin and the blue line represents deoxygenated hemoglobin. What we can see is that deoxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more red light and oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more infrared light. There is an isobestic point at around 815 nanometers and this represents the point at which both the types of hemoglobin absorb the same amount of light mechanism. The system relies on two principles. One is the Beer law, which states that the amount of light absorbed is proportional to the concentration of the solute in solution. The second is the Lambert law. The amount of light absorbed is proportional to the thickness of the absorbing layer. Light is absorbed by a number of layers of tissue. The arterial proportion represents around 5% of total absorbance and is referred to as the alternating proportion in line with the arterial pulsation. The photo detector is able to generate a voltage and this depends on the amount of light it receives. The light emitting diodes shine at high frequency to improve the signal to noise ratio and the microprocessor then analyzes the absorbance of light at both the spectra and produces a display on the screen. Advantages of the system? It is non-invasive, it's simple, it's ubiquitous, it's relatively cost-effective. There are some disadvantages, however. The pulse oximeter was calibrated to plus or minus 2%, from 100% saturations down to 70% saturations in healthy volunteers. However, it was felt unethical to measure saturations at any lower than 70%, and therefore the data is extrapolated and subject to inaccuracy at lower levels. There are a number of sources of error. Carbon monoxide causes a falsely high reading, usually at 100%. Mephemoglobinemia causes a false low reading, usually around 85%. And methylene blue and indocyanine green dyes also cause a false low reading. If the patient is hypoperfused, then this will cause a loss of the arterial alternating signal, and this causes reduced accuracy. In these types of patients, the probe can cause injury, and burns have been reported in children. The other important thing to say is that the pulse oximeter doesn't give any direct information about oxygen delivery and there is also a 20 to 30 second time lag.